Today, we're going to talk about Camtasia 2022 and focus on what's new. TechSmith, the developers of Camtasia, have added some new features as well as over a thousand new assets. If you're new to Camtasia and want to follow along with this video, you can pause and go get a 30-day free trial from the link in the description below. For those of you who already have Camtasia and this will be an upgrade, if you changed any of the preferences, they will be reset to the default in 2022. Learn from my mistake and go double check that your preferences are set to how you like them. I was halfway through editing my first video when I realized that the default canvas size is 1080p and I prefer to edit in 4K. Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's jump on in and look at some of the new features. The differences start with the getting started experience. When I click on the shortcut for Camtasia 2022, the window that pops up has been redesigned and received a UI update. On the Getting Started tab, we still have four basic choices, but notice this little arrow next to New Recording. Click that and now you can choose to start a new recording in Camtasia, Audiate, or Snagit if you happen to have those tools as well. They are additional products offered by TechSmith and have their own subscription fees. I happen to have all of them because I love to play with new toys but I will be honest and say they are not required to create a video if you do not want to purchase other tools. Below, you will see recent projects. Before, it was a simple list, but now it displays like a film strip, which honestly is a bit easier to read. The next tab is templates that allow you to start your video with a few key elements already in place. Again, the prior version had templates, but there are some new ones this year. If you happen to have Camtasia Maintenance, you can now quickly get to the resources that come with that right from the Getting Started page. I'm going to open a Camtasia project, and the first thing I will do is show you where I went to change my preferences. Go to the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on the Edit tab. All the way at the bottom of that drop-down menu is Preferences. Here in the center of the screen, you can see the Preferences box. The first thing that I did is put a check mark for the mirror waveform. Then I went to project and you can see that I've already updated my dimensions to 4K. But if you click on the drop down, you will see that there are several other options available. So pick the one that works best for you. I'd also like to point out that the standard frame rate per second is 30. You can click this drop down and change it to anything you want. When I used to create gamer videos, 60 was better, but I'm going to leave it at 30 for training videos and click OK. With that bit of customization done, we're going to start at the top of the navigation menu and look at the new Camtasia 2020 asset library. The product page says that there are over 1,000 new assets, and that is true, but what I found out is several of the assets are different colors or variations of the same effect. Even with that understanding, there are a ton of cool new things to play with. To demonstrate some of these, I'm going to walk through an example. First, I want to take this blank canvas and add a gradient to the screen. As you can see, there are multiple folders, but I'm going to choose from the light gradient folder today. And what this does is it lets me add some color behind the effects that I will add without changing the canvas color for the whole video. Next, I'm going to take a look at the UI kit options and we're going to scroll down until we find a search field and I'm going to add that to the window and then make it a little bit bigger. This is going to be a search box that will simulate a Google search. Now, what I need to do is go to the properties field on the right hand side of the screen and type in what I want to show in the search box. If I click play, you're seeing the typing effect in the search bar. At the end of the typing, I want to add a visual effect for when I would hit enter on the keyboard to add emphasis. So I'm going to go to the emphasis FX folder, and this is where you will see many of the new assets that happen to be similar, but with different colors to choose from. I'm going to open the first folder and choose the yellow option and drag the effect to the canvas. This little yellow circle indicates the center of the effect where you will place it in the correct location based on your desired outcome. In this case, when I play through, you see that the yellow circle radiates to indicate where I clicked on the keyboard. 
One of the biggest changes in Camtasia 2022 is the cursor effects. So for example, I can go into the library and choose one of the many cursors that are available and place it on the screen in the same location where my burst effect is going to happen to give just a little extra emphasis. I will be honest, it took a bit of trial and error to get the timing just right, but this is just a simple example and you can get very creative with these effects. Another all new set of assets are under the channel kit folder. This is more geared at content creators and has a few options to add a subscribe button to the screen. I know that not everyone who makes a video needs a subscribe button. The title section may be more your speed if you are creating videos for work. For example, I can go to the add big type 001 asset. And when I add this to the screen, it plays this cool rotating word effect that will call attention to important concepts in your video. The default words are create, teach and inspire but we can go to the properties pane on the right hand side of the screen and change it to any words that we would like. But even as a YouTuber, I can add in like, subscribe and follow and have a cool effect on my screen to draw attention. Back to our business example, there are several titles to choose from. So for example, I can scroll down and get this headline slider that puts the words inside of a bracket and you can use this to call attention to a quote or even a company core value. Once I make that change, I notice that the white letters aren't standing out very well on the screen. So what I can do is I can come back to the property section and click the drop down next to the text and then change the color of the text. Now I have added some sample footage so that we can take a look at the callouts options. I'm going into the indicator in text and to field section so that I can show you some of the options there. What I'm gonna do is select one of these callouts and drag and drop it onto the canvas and make sure that it points right at these three dots, which is the more options command. Then what I'm gonna do is go into the properties and update the heading and the subheading. From there, I will also change the color and the size of the font so that it stands out a little bit more on my canvas. Now, when I start running through the callout action, it will be very clear to my viewer that the three dots is called more actions. There are many ways to use these callouts. So for example, let's pretend I'm giving a business presentation and I want to add a callout to my PowerPoint slide to bring attention to some favorable metrics. I'm going to drop in the callout and then add a few words of context, such as 25% increased sales in the new market. Now you have a small idea of the options available in the asset library for Camtasia 2022. I'm going to leave it here and let you explore the rest of the options on your own. We're gonna move on and talk about how to edit a mouse path as well as some other visual effects. The new cursor path option is the one thing that I needed the most. In one of my recent videos, I said that I tend to move my mouse around way too much. Cursor path is going to let me fix that problem. I'm going to click on edit cursor path and then you get the option to simplify the existing path or create a new one. For now, I'm going to click simplify and click continue. Camtasia has drawn the path that my cursor followed on the screen. And as you can see, I moved it all over the place before finally going to the top of the screen where I wanted to click. I have two options for fixing this. I can select a mouse point, right click and say delete cursor point or I can go down to the timeline and each one of these dots represents a cursor point that I can simply delete. Personally, I find it easier to edit the cursor points from the timeline. I basically erase the mistake of going to the bottom of the screen and now my mouse will just go to the top of the screen as intended. If that is all I wanted to fix, I can go to the right hand side of the screen and click finish editing in the properties pane. 
Now I want to look at a second example of how to manually edit the cursor path. If I go to visual effects and I select cursor path, I can drop it onto this screenshot that I have here. I never captured the mouse click on the screenshot, so now I'm going to add it in manually. As you can see, I'm moving the cursor points to exactly where I want the navigation to show. Now this by default is a curved cursor path. I can go to the properties pane on the right hand side and choose another line type. This first one's going to give me a straight line. Now I'm gonna scale up my mouse to make it a little easier to see. And now I can play through the effect and you can see my mouse moves in a straight line. This tool is very useful, but the most common way I use it is when people send me screenshots and expect me to create a video with a voiceover. While we are here in the visual effects, let's take a look at a simple example of the spotlight effect. In this sample image, there are a few people looking at some charts. I want to draw attention to the chart, so I'm going to put on the spotlight effect and make the focus just a bit to the left of the chart. You can move the focus bar to decide how intense the effect should be. In this case, I really want you to look at this chart, so I'm going to reduce the number to focus more light at the focal point. The next visual effect that we'll look at is blend mode. To be fully transparent, I've not found a use for it yet in any of my training videos, but came up with one just to demonstrate. I'm going back to my PowerPoint slide and want to add a little something extra in the background, so I found this graphic with a bunch of light bulbs. When I put it on the timeline, the dark background obscures the slide. If you go to blend mode and drop it on top, the darkened background goes away. Then I can use the properties to tone down the light bulbs just a bit by adjusting the intensity. Basically, this effect is a way to blend the two pieces of media into one. At the beginning of the video, I said some of the new choices I can take or leave, and this is one of them. I know some people who do more vlog style or cinematic editing, and they are in love with this. I'll leave it to you to decide what you will do with it. Next, we're going to look at Audiate integration. Audiate is a tool that TechSmith created to help you edit audio, and it is a separate application that does cost extra to use. You can get a seven day trial though to check it out. So notice that I have some audio on the timeline. Right click and select edit in Audiate. If prompted, save your Camtasia project, and then the audio will transfer to the Audiate program. Keep in mind, you will have to do this for each track that you create. In this example, I only have one track, so it will make the audio editing a lot easier. The major benefit to Audiate is that you can edit your audio by reading the text and then cutting out the pieces you don't need. So for example here, you see these three dots. They represent pauses in the video. I can remove each pause one by one if I want by right clicking and then selecting delete. The other option is to go up to edit and say delete all hesitations or silence all hesitations. Now, sometimes I don't like to use this because occasionally the pause is intentional. Now we're going to look at how to edit the audio by reading the text. If you were to read through this screen, you would see that I had a couple of false starts and it said, I don't know what I'm saying here. I can remove all of that from the audio by simply selecting it and deleting it. I'm going to fast forward the video here as I continue working through all of the different mistakes that I made. And you can keep going with this until you have exactly what you want left in your audio track. Now that the edits are done, it's time to send the audio file back to Camtasia. To do that, click on export and then export to Camtasia. You have two choices. You can send back only the edited media or you can choose to edit the Camtasia timeline as well. This will automatically synchronize your audio changes with your video. You will be prompted to save your audio file and then the export will send the file and any edits back to Camtasia. If we focus in on the timeline, you can see that there is a stitch mark on the video file where the audio file created the update. Now in this case, it actually created a weird jump cut. Sometimes I find it better just to send the audio back and edit the video on my own, but I encourage you to play with it a little bit and see how it fits your editing style. To be totally transparent, I don't use Audiate very much because you cannot send multiple audio clips over at once. 
I tend to record in small audio chunks, mostly because I stutter a lot. If TechSmith ever makes it available for me to send multiple audio clips, I'll give this feature another try, but for now, it's not for me. Our project file is done and we can export it. Camtasia has added a simplified export process. Click on the green button in the upper right hand corner and then you will select local file. A floating dialog box will appear where you will name your project and save it to the designated location. Then simply click export. In this video, I went over the major changes to Camtasia 2022, and overall, I do like most of the features, especially the new mouse path correction and the cursor updates. That alone was worth it to me for the upgrade. Several of the new assets will be making their way into my video. However, I'm going to leave it up to you to decide whether or not the cost to upgrade is worth it to you. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.